Kia ora te whanau, ngā mahi mahana kia koutou. Thank you for the introduction, Katarina. Um, I'd also like to give thanks for actually being here today, making the step up to keynote. When I got the email, I was uh, very humbled and very excited. Uh, Russell Bishop is an absolute hero of mine. I was trying to explain to my 17-year-old twins at home when I got the email and I was rather excited how exciting that actually was. They didn't quite grasp it until I said, <laughs> it would be like uh, you guys meeting Tupac. And I'm like, oh, right, okay. But then I tried to explain that to Russell last night and he didn't know who Tupac was. <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, I guess I'll start with one Tuesday morning about five years ago. I was in South Auckland. And I popped into an alternative education provider to check in with some of the youth workers that I had a professional development program for and to check in with our kids. Now these are kids who have been excluded from two or more schools or on continuous suspension where no other school will take them. I popped in with one of our Ngā Rangatahi Toa mentors uh, and to see the youth workers. I'd been asked to bring our mentor along so he could be part of their careers day thingy so he could give them a pathway to how to be a cool artist and tattooist. So I went into my meeting, Josh went down the hallway and presented to the kids, telling them all about his cool life and how great it was to be a tattooist and basically having them wrapped around his little finger. Then the youth worker came back into uh, Hui and asked me whether I would follow Josh's presentation with my pathway to being a teacher. Now don't get me wrong, being a teacher is rad, it's amazing, it's incredibly inspirational when it's done right, but following on the heels of a tattooist and an artist, I felt that maybe that was going to be a bit of a hard sell on a cold Tuesday morning to a bunch of alternative education kids in South Auckland. But luckily, being a good teacher is knowing how to shift with the times and move quickly on your feet, think on your feet. So, and I did know my audience really well, so I chose to speak directly to them. So I got up in front of that class and I've said, you know what, I've fucked up more times than I haven't, but now I am a teacher. And I was at one point in the time in my life where I spent every single red cent I owned on drugs, but now I'm a teacher. Being a teacher is not about being successful, about finishing school, about going to university and getting a degree. Being a teacher is about being yourself, knowing yourself, owning your shit and always being a learner. And most importantly, constantly learning from the things that other people might call failure. Boom! It was like I was a cool artist in Tadoos and everyone signed up for Teachers College and we lived happily ever after. But it didn't actually quite happen like that. However, what that moment did give me was a time to reflect on my own path having escaped mainstream school teaching, having moved into alternative education, and having founded an organisation which through our voice and vision, we give voice and vision to those that most have given up on. The kōrero I gave to those kids has always been my thinking, right through school, right through teachers' college, which was not a happy time for me, and while I was teaching. But these were not places where you were necessarily encouraged to have that kōrero. But at the moment of speaking with those kids, I had found myself in a position where there was capacity for unbridled realness, and it was extremely kapai to me. I used to say that all you needed to be able to successfully work with teenagers was to remember what it was like to be a teenager yourself. I still do think this is critical, but I also think that to successfully enter into a transformational and symbiotic relationship and partnership of ako with a teenager, to be a true teacher, you need a whole lot more. You need those fuck-ups. You need vision, you need passion, patience, the ability to tough it out, the ability to cry, but most importantly you need the ability to love yourself and to love those kids, to recognise yourself and another. To me, that relationship of ako, of teaching and learning together, is a human right, and it is what many of our three and a half thousand alternative education kids in Aotearoa largely miss out on. Today I'm going to call it all to you not about necessarily how we teach or just about what we teach at Ngarangatahi Toa, but how through an unashamedly revolutionary spirit we at Ngarangatahi Toa restore the humanity, the dignity, the agency and the identity that is stripped from a kid when they are failed by the world in which we live. 
Ngā rangatahi tour works exclusively with rangatahi outside mainstream education and their whānau, with some of the 3,500 alternative education students and some of the almost 29,000 Waini rangatahi in Aotearoa aged between 15 and 19. We engage intensively for months, sometimes years, with our awesome rangatahi and whānau. We work cross societally from Ōtara to Ponsonby, paving a two-way street of connection and understanding across those traditional divides. This is extremely powerful. Our programs activate the social, cultural and entrepreneurial networks required for a true super city in Auckland and a true super country of Aotearoa. In learning for democracy, for that relational connection that has been so eloquently spoken of last night and this morning, Community cultural development is our primary tool of engagement, empowerment and inclusive social change. To me, community cultural development is vastly different to community <coughs> arts. It is political, it is revolutionary and it is transformational. There are many different, different definitions of community cultural development. This is the one that we connect with. Community cultural development uses community development principles of democracy, social justice, participation and advocacy in com combination with cultural tools such as theatre, storytelling and visual arts to create community-based arts practice that is powerful, has meaning and has a beneficial long-term impact on participants and audience. Michelle Evans' definition of community cultural development informs our development of ako as it refers to the overarching principles to which we adhere and it makes note of both the participants as well as the role of the audience. Within this definition lies the understanding and expression of a cultural identity through the arts by participants, but with a next step to societal impact of such work through audience engagement. Both these elements are key to our current success and to our future direction. We co-create projects with our rangatahi and whānau, responding to the overwhelming need and right for tino rangatiratanga in our most vulnerable communities. <coughs> Excuse me. And we then use this empowerment as inspiration to everyone in our society. Now, I founded Ngā Rangatahi Toa because, like everybody here, I believe that every human in Aotearoa deserves the chance to fulfil their potential, no matter what their life situation. And I believe that this will come through education, through teaching, through the power of ako. Specifically, I believe in the true transformational capacity of creativity and truth-telling to bring social change. This belief shapes everything I do and it sits at the core of Ngā Rangatahi Tō. We use one-to-one -one and group community culture development mentoring from top creative talent of Aotearoa to walk with our rangatahi as they transition into adulthood facilitating a return to mainstream school, into tertiary study or into employment. Intensive workshops alongside vibrant classroom-based mahi results in a successful transition rate between 80 and 100 per cent, putting the national average in alternative education that hovers around 40 per cent to shame. Now what we do works, what we do is not actually rocket science, what we do is all about self-determination, personal empowerment and community action. Now in 2009 we started with eight kids and a one night exhibition at Fresh Gallery in Ōtara that was attended by about 15 Fano and friends. Last October our theatre based inter arts project Manawa Order had a five night sellout season at the Herald Theatre in Altea Square in Queen Street and over 1,000 people saw that work. To be honest people could not get enough of us our awesome kids, our awesome merch, and I think just being in a space of truth like the one that we create. And this year we will work up to 50, with 50 rangatahi and whānau in South Auckland, again crossing that societal divide through creativity, performance and critical conversation. Refining our existing projects and piloting new initiatives with a view to catalyzing true community change over the next five to 10 years. Manawa Order is our flagship program it's our public face, and it dominates Auckland every October. It is an intensive two-week 
one-to-one -one mentoring project focused on that personal empowerment. Rangatahi appeared with cro top creative talent to produce a collaborative work that is based on the lived experience and cultural identity of the rangatahi. Workshops are held and then developed into an inter-arts perf theatre performance. Last year was amazing and we even had a little documentary made and I'd love to show you guys the trailer. The tech guy at the back is going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> began in 2009. I was in charge of the teaching and learning for every kid that was kicked out of school in the South Auckland area. And part of my role was to go around every alternative education provider and work with the kids and work with the tutors. And what I saw was a complete lack of access to creative arts. And if you are someone who doesn't fit into mainstream education. For me as an educator, creativity is a way to actually access all learning. So we use creative arts in that space between alternative education and the kids' next step. And Manawa Order last December was the first time that we actually made that step into theatre. Kia ora, my name's Adrian, and what I'm looking forward to is not being shy up on the stage again. <laughs> First time we've got 12 kids involved in Manawa Order. Uh, the first time we had 10, that's our normal model, 10 kids and 10 mentors. I'm Lady. I'm Crystal. When was the first time we met? We met just before my before I had a tour and she came to the sound check and we met that day, eh? Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure I mean guess for me it's important to work with creatives of excellence, but more important is how they are as humans and yeah, that connection is really important, like who, we don't just randomly pull it out of a hat, like which mentor goes with which kid, it's a, it's a process that I reflect deeply on. Yeah, good so I was saying, I was saying boys, um, we'll do that right in, like, just like that. Don't think about it too much, just get it all out, get it all out, and then from that we'll try and get some cool lines. Should we just find the story? Yeah, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Would your dad say sorry? Yep. Are those words that would come from his mouth? Yep. But he he sees them. But how would he say it? Say, for my mother and my son. Make sad and sound like. Hey. Yeah. I just read it in English. Oh, sorry, he said. Yeah, because it sounds better than someone. <laughs> what happens during this week? My hope and what I've seen in every single project that we've ever done is that the kids grow in confidence and they learn to trust and they understand and respond to the fact that they are in an environment of love, kindness and compassion. Um, I just wanted to um, let everybody know that um, I'm sorry if I stare at you funny or if, like, if I stare at you and it's not a good look or if I act funny around you. Um, don't take it pers oh, don't take it personal. Um, I'm like happy to be here and stuff. It's just that I've got some personal issues going on for me. So yeah, sorry about that. He kākanoahe, he rui a mai, he rangi atea. He kākanoahe. I rui a mai, I rangi atea. Breaking through soil of violence, police raids, burglaries, gangs, gangsters, poverty that keeps me trapped as a slave and roots of crime. Yeah, do, you to, do you want to have a listen to it, Kahi? Oh, yes, please. That's, that's at different times of the thing. Yeah, yeah, so it's like different tracks. Awesome. Poverty that keeps me trapped as a slave and roots of crime. Reaching up. Looking for hope, sunshine. Ki te ao marama, he kākano a hau. Number two. Professional is at this time. Oh, thank you, Chuck. Hey, pleasure.
the core part of the kaupapa that I think sets us apart from other youth development organisations is the valuing of that performance and the valuing and the understanding of the necessity to understand and hear our kids' stories. And that's important for both sides of the equation. It's really important for our kids to have their stories on stage in front of people who they've never met before to do the same thing, to own it and never be ashamed of any experiences or really anything that they've done, but to learn how to integrate that into their lives and to present it. My birthday is on August 24th, 1997. I lost my mum when she gave birth to me my twin. My dad left us in hospital. My mom's best friend took us in. And she split with her husband, which is my stepdad that's in Oz now. It's one of the reasons why I chose to become a crumb. Nārangatahitoa is awesome. It helps to nurture care like parents do. This whānau is a hug, warm like the sun, but doesn't burn. There is no cold here, only sun, only love. Tōwi a mai, te waka, ki te urunga, te waka, ki te moinga, te waka. Destination of a generation breaking through tides of circumstances. Navigating for good soil, he finua. This brews seeds of knowledge, wisdom, understanding of life, living, he kakanoa ho. Pollinations, creation, indigenous strains, roots, spreading the depths of the spear to connect. <laughs> We're taking one order um, to Flaxmere uh, in November, so we're having our film crew come with us um, to the Bay, which is where I started my teaching career. So, yeah, hopefully it'll be done by December 31st, 2015. Um, now, woven within all of this is the path that led me, I guess, to be here with you today. Um, this is where it started. I was lucky enough to grow up in a pretty out of environment myself. One that is, I guess, the real inspiration behind Ngārangatahi Toa. To found, grow and lead an organisation like Ngārangatahi Toa, you do need a fierce grace and a total commitment that many others may and actually totally do consider entirely obsessive. But that is who I am. It's how I was raised. And my immersion in my mahi, like working 7 to 80 hours on the rig, is as normal to me as owning a TV is to others. This is me. My, bro my brother, Richie. Me, my dad, my brother, Richie. Now, my mum took this photo to celebrate my first day of school at Aranoi Primary School. Considering my dad was six foot five, and in that photo I'm five and I'm up to here on him, I've always been pretty tall, um, a bit larger than life, and so that did kind of set the scene for me, I guess. I grew up in Governors Bay, which is just outside of Christchurch. It was a highly political home. My dad was a member of the New Zealand Communist Party. And even as a wee one, I can remember out of it amazing discussions. Pictures of Lenin on the wall, that's Vladimir Ilyich, not John. <laughs> and pictures of Marx and Engels, and just a general vibe of agency. Social justice was core to the long bottom kaupapa. And I feel like I've always had faith in myself and my ability to bring change. And that's not just to challenge the establishment, even though I've enjoyed doing that a lot of times during my life. But it was almost as if to think that not just challenging the establishment, but that I can create with others a new establishment, that has always seemed totally doable to me. And that's thanks to this. 
Now, once when I was older than that, but much younger than I am now, I remember having a small meltdown about not being able to change the world fast enough or the state of it all or something to my dad. And he said to me, all you can do is all you can do. And I knew that my true frustration lay not at what was happening out there, but it really lay within. I was defensive and angry for many years. I partied very hard, railing against the wrongs and injustices of this world, simply because I had not explored my own capacity. In fact, I was actively limiting my own capacity. To be at peace with myself, to be able to get up in the morning, I always work at the very edge, challenging myself and feeling out what my real capacity is. I push myself to do all that I can do, all of the time, because nothing else makes sense to me. So I guess that's the simple inspiration of Ngā Ranga Tahi Tua. I just found it something that made me make sense. And I have those same expectations of rising to challenges. I have those expectations of our kids. And I think because of that, Ngā Ranga Tahi Tua makes a lot of people make sense to themselves. Rangatahi, staff, audience, the power of narrative to bring that connection and social change is in our bones and telling our story does give you strength. This next is a piece is a work created over five days during the Sole Project, one of our one-to-one -one mentoring programs by Gully, a 14-year-old who was excluded from mainstream. This was his first time telling a story and his first writing experience. I was born the 25th of September 1999 in Fasi Malfanga, the humble kingdom, aka Tonga. Raised in the heart of Auckland, Otara Estate. You stink with criminals and drug dealers, uncivilized car stealers, born to be road cleaners, but really were youth leaders, musicians, artists, and good parents. Sometimes I feel like I'm chasing my dreams, blindfolded and dodging traffic, trying to get an education. At Papa Tui High School, the teachers would always say, you have the potential to do well, but you're just wasting it. And then my boys would say, Kaza, what you up to? Is that us? Gege Hosia Allenby? When I was young, my dream was to play in the NRL, running circles around Bully Slater and taking Stacey Jones' spot in the Warriors. Last year, running the pyramid, I was chasing my dream. When suddenly, I wake up and realized my passion was music. It was in my blood, it was in my heart, mind, body, and soul. The words music and engineer popped straight into my head. I chose music engineering because I'd be able to record and write songs for my dad. Succeed, survive, support myself and family, surprise and inspire South Auckland students to strive towards their goals. Now you see that I'm not the South Auckland stereotype. I am proud of where I am and where I'm heading. I am a musician, I am humble, I am a South Aucklander, and I'm a Zika Laomanu, but my friends call me Gully. Now Gully writing that is one thing. Actually giving Gully the opportunity to then communicate and represent himself through his work is where the real strength lies. So Gully presented that live as part of our exhibition, an opening that was attended by over 500 people. And I believe if the strength of that and the confidence that that gave him very much contributed to his successful transition back into mainstream school. He is doing music at school. He's in a band with an eye to music production. So what we do is actually awesome. It works, and what we do involves these beautiful rangatahi, but it is actually about all of us. We don't just deal with South Auckland issues. They're not just Auckland issues. They're not actually even New Zealand issues. They're issues of humanity. Each and every one of us is in this together. And Ngā Rangatahi Toa, I see, is a conduit for this crucial cross-societal connection. Our audience for both Manawa Order and our project that runs throughout the year, Art Action, is an amazing mix of people, bridging that divide in our world through honesty and an opportunity to connect. I see us and our kids and our ability to tell stories as a conduit for connection at this core level of humanity. Beyond all the bullshit, the stats, we are actually all humans. It just seems that somehow we've slid away from that core truth. 
that Ngāra Ngātahi Tōa, we are totally committed to social change through telling our story to a wider audience and for our kids to have the opportunity to listen to stories that are different from their own. This is powerful stuff because the stereotyping and the fear goes both ways. It's not just the white middle class scared of the most pathologised sector of our community that is our beautiful young Māori and Pacifica men. That fear isn't just one way. The boys we work with are freaked out to talk to white people. It's very much the unknown and they're very fearful of being judged. This fear mongering is precipitated by the media but fear is so easily combated through bravery. And through the relationship of Ako we build with our kids creating together, we make our kids brave enough to take that first step and tell their stories. I think it also happens to help in a weird way that there's a random Mighty Whitey leading a predominantly Māori and Pacifica organisation. I, I so often have the kids tell me, and my own two at home, that I'm not really white, or I'm more Māori, or I should be Samoan, or I'm not like other white people. To which I say, well, I actually am white. <laughs> I'm definitely not New Zealand European, but I am proudly Pākehā. I'm definitely not Captain Cook's homie, but I am proud of my parents, my grandparents, and my ancestors from Britain, Scotland, and France. And I'm actually like a whole lot of white people out there, good people who have been also crippled by the ugly social, cultural, political, and spiritual hangover of colonialism. I have just been lucky enough to have had the opportunities from a very early age to get outside my comfort zone on a regular basis, which actually is sometimes hard if you're part of the dominant culture. I therefore understand that there is a different way of seeing and being than the way things are. There is another paradigm. My dear friend Jean last night, I hope she won't mind me saying this, called, said, me, said that I was a Māori in a white body. And I really do take this as a compliment, but I have to ask myself why I take that as a compliment. And I think it's because it means that at my core, beyond my white body, I am truly human. I am part of a whole. I am connected. Being Māori in a white body is not about not being white. It's about being a highly evolved human. That's why, why I can honour my tipuna as Pākehā and still take it as a compliment. I just see te ao Māori, whakawhanaungatanga, kaitiakitanga as just being more fully evolved in terms of humanity. Anyway, that's a, I did take it as a compliment, Jean. <laughs> anyway, having to talk about these issues, my whiteness, is really part of the strength of Ngā Rangatahi Toa. As we heard last night from Russell, in Aotearoa, New Zealand, initiatives such as Te Kotahitanga and Kahi Kitia lead the way in culturally responsive pedagogy, establishing a framework for working successfully with Māori students. Similarly, the Pacifica Education Plan outlines identified best practice with Pacifica students. Ngā Rangatahi Toa takes these initiatives, which aim to create a culturally responsive context by learning, by, sorry, by affirming and validating students and teachers as culturally located individuals, and actively develops these key learnings into our own model of best practice. We also use Paulo Freire's culture circles. Through what we do, who does it, and how we do it, Ngā Rangatahi Toa has established a culturally responsive practice with a strong theoretical backbone, consisting of highly innovative program development and content, and an evaluation process that empowers participants. Where sometimes other programs might pause or fall short of an interrogation of white privilege and institutional racism in Aotearoa, New Zealand, my whiteness and the kids' identification of this means that at Ngā Rangatahi Toa, we have this critical literacy at our core. It is a constant conversation. Through exploring a, culture, a critical pedagogy of whiteness and this impact on our education system, in conversation with Rangatahi and professional development with our mentors, and in conversation with our audiences, kids and staff gain an understanding of the societal reproductive function of our education system. A neoliberal government would have us believe that education is the great equaliser. This is not so. Education perpetuates the status quo, the dominant discourse. We all must therefore perceive the crucial nature of our mahi, collaboratively developing a true alternative an education-based paradigm of human development 
through creativity, cultural responsiveness, and critical pedagogy. Maranga tahi toa is awesome. It helps to nurture care like parents do. This whānau is a hug, warm like the sun, but doesn't burn. There is no cold here, only sun, only love. He kākano a hau, i rui a mai, i rangi ātea. Breaking through soil of violence, police raids, burglaries, gangs, gangsters. Poverty that keeps me trapped as a slave and root of crime. Reaching up, looking for hope, sunshine. Ki te ao marama, he kākano a hau. Karite, karite, kamo. Ringa, ringa, pakia. Why, why, taka here? Then I cut a few. Ah, come at it, Looking down on us. us, who to blame, who to shame, we got no one to trust. trust. Got the crime playing Monopoly, taking more property. Using the keys so they get through what's in property. Open the door to the elderly ball. Key a call for another who be giving it all. No stress, stay blessed, protest for the best. And unite as one, become brighter than the sun. Yeah. Toi amai, te waka, ki te urunga, te waka. Kite moinga, te waka. Destination of a generation, breaking through tides or circumstances, navigating for good soil. He whenua, this spurs seeds of knowledge, wisdom, understanding of life, living, he kakanoa ho. Pollinations, creation, indigenous strains, roots, spreading the depths of the spear to connect. In a post-colonial world, to be truly culturally responsive, we must honour cultural customs, language and ways of being in the world, but we must also go beyond this. While honouring this is core to the business of Ngā Rangatahi Toa and is woven into the fabric of who we are, our culturally responsive paradigm is structured on a socio-political framework in which rangatahi are challenged and empowered to understand the macro-societal issues born of colonialism the impact of these issues on their lives, whānau and community, and most importantly, to embrace their own agency to positively bring change. Through supported critical praxis, rangatahi place their own cultural identity at the centre of their identity and lived experience. Now what you saw in that video, that's just some of our kids with just some of their mentors completing their creative project, filmed in Okahu Bay, in response to their new knowledge about the Takaparafa occupation. These are kids that have been kicked out of school, who have been arrested, many, some many more than once, who have prospected for gangs, who have sold drugs to support themselves and their families. They are amazing humans. On screen and through their words, they embody their true selves, self-determined individuals with a collective mandate for change. Through art action, we actively expose rangatahi to the untaught histories of Tamaki Makoto and uncover voices that are silenced in the textbooks but that are loud and proud in images, music, transformational theatre, toy Māori, Pacifica art traditions and urban art forms. Through field trips and critical conversations on post-colonial indigenous and Pacifica identity in Aotearoa, with key community partners such as Ngāti Whātua and Polynesian Panthers, and through intensive arts mentoring from culturally relevant practitioners, creativity is explored 
as a marker of personal and cultural identity. Cultural traditions are considered in a contemporary context with rangatahi bringing their own experience and understanding of cultural identity, both ethnic and urban. This unique viewpoint is protected and preserved in our projects. Artist mentors are highly relevant to rangatahi in terms of ethnic cultural identity, life experience and in their connection to urban cultural identity. Relationships of deep trust, manaakitanga and mana motuhaki are formed enabling that process of ako in which mentors and rangatahi are both teachers and learners. It is this symbiotic relationship it is culturally responsive to both Te Ao Māori and Te Ao Pacifica, building the hōra of all participants. The dawn calls reality to her knees, begging for justice, begging to be free. Pollution or raids, shitty state houses, freedom. Equality is the day I see. Justice for one is not enough. More of it, and we shall rise above it till the right person runs it. Until then, we all understand what it's like to be a Polynesian woman and man. It's just a long that Polynesians are being treated as second-class citizens. Is this how you feel? Yeah, we're not getting a uh, fair deal in this society. That's why we're talking about the revolution. Yeah, yeah, labelled as a second-class citizen. Look at the state that we're living in. Raised in poverty, got people mocking me at the clothes I wear as they stand. But be aware as we're coming through Taking a step every day and we're telling you They love to take it all of course Trials every time my name is up in the courts And the thing I liked about the Panthers was they provided us a connection to uh, a section of the New Zealand community that nobody really gave a shit for yeah. uh, The Pacific Island community Nobody really gave a damn for it To be who you are, okay. Stand for your rights. We don't have much, not much. But love and plenty. Who oh, be who you are, stand for your rights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. No freedom, there's a reason why we thieving Believing, the people you're deceiving Pain high rates and you wonder why we work late To put food on the plate For those people facing racism Stand strong and don't take it in We all sin, so it's time to begin A better place that we all can live in If I'd have gone into prison I'd be a different person I can have full of hate and busting, yeah one does not like to see people rather helpless in the face of a system they don't understand. They don't understand. This is the long on freedom to live. Reality to her knees, begging for justice, begging to be free. Five o'clock. That's my really bad editing skills, I'm sorry. <laughs> Even much better than that. <laughs>
Um, so last year, through the revolutionary lens of art action, we looked at the gentrification of inner city suburbs of Auckland and the community movement led by the Polynesian Panthers. For the Auckland Arts Festival this year, we brought Emery Douglas, the ex-Minister of Culture for the Black Panthers, to work as an art action mentor. Along with Tingi Ness, who had been part of our Polynesian project the year before, these beautiful, peaceful warriors blew the minds of our rangatahi with their passion and commitment to the cause. Emery was basically one of the most amazing humans I've ever met. Um, he worked alongside of our kids to really elicit and create conversation about the issues in Mangari and created with our kids and with another of our artists, Tracy, Tracy Taupio, this mural that was then gifted to the people of Mangari. The growth of Ngā Rangatahi Toa is driven by our commitment to social change, but also by our commitment to our pedagogy of love, kindness and compassion. This pedagogy enables true learning in a safe, trusting environment. This is how humans flourish. They how they come to inhabit themselves and have confidence to just be how and who they are. This has not been our rangatahi experience of school. Our kids are scarred for life by the system, excluded socially, academically and culturally in a systemic sense. Lives of chaos at home are exacerbated, not eased, by the lives of trauma at school. This is not the fault of any one teacher. It is simply a manifestation of a broken and archaic system groaning under the weight of unconsciousness. We give our rangatahi the tools to be agents of change, to feel connected and to know thyself. It is the confidence of a boy who came to us on referral from Women's Refuge, who had been kicked out of school and who did not speak more than one word in the entire time of the whole first project he was involved in. But uh, fast forward six months and now he is our trickster and he was on stage at the Herald Theatre for Manawa Order in front of those thousand people. <laughs> He's completed his NCA level one and two, and he is transitioning into art school. So I am inspired to grow Ngā Rangatahi Toa simply because I know that it works. It's about people, it's about relationships between Ray in the foreground and his mentor Chip in the background, built on love, kindness, and compassion. But above all, it's about what lies both within and beyond Ray and Chip, the lifelong strong relationships that are built through Ngā Rangatahi Toa, the trust, the truth, the love, are a recognition of our humanity, our life force and the interconnectedness of all of us, of all life forces. This is the basis to me of democracy, to know thyself, to know thyself as interconnected and as part of a whole. And we do this through the process of truth and creativity. That is, this is a catharsis for everyone that is involved, the rangatahi, the mentors, the staff, the volunteers, the whānau, the audiences, our community partners. We all acknowledge that there is absolute magic in allowing a kid to be who they already are. We do not change our kids. All we do is create a space in which they can revert back to their natural state of being, and that is one of love, kindness and compassion. Now for us, that comes through connecting, through creativity and a mindfulness practice. We do out of it stuff like yoga and meditation and the kids think it's pretty fuzzy <laughs> until they begin to feel the effects of these practices. This photo was taken after a meditation on nature practice in which I asked the rangatahi and mentors to consider that, life, that the life in them was the same as the life that was in a flower, a tree, an animal. We then went across to the Western Park to commune with nature, and this was an incredible time of holding space, quiet, creativity, and connectedness. And it is from this place that I believe that considered and empowered action can take place. Being a founder is a pretty out of it journey because your organisation does develop as you do, and I'm still very much a work in progress. In general, you start out with just you and an idea, and then that idea grows and spreads and becomes something new of, and of its own. And sometimes it is a challenge to honour this, to keep the faith and be an inspirational leader, as well as taking people with you. 
I've definitely had challenges with that, and I admit that. And I've had a lot of missteps on this journey, and I'll have a lot more. But I, and I've sacrificed a lot that has impacted on me personally and on others. But I am supported in my journey by the amazing people who truly believe in what we do. There have been times this year when I've had to breathe through challenges and view them as opportunities. We've had major upheavals with staff and a couple of our mentors, which was taxing and stressful. However, walking through that with me are the people who do believe in what we're doing. We've missed out on core funding at the beginning of this year. That, on the face of it, seemed like it might threaten our very survival. But in reality, what it did do is challenge me again to be more innovative and more creative and really refine us back to exactly who we are. So through probably the greatest challenges that I've had in my life, I've learnt the greatest lessons, which is not really that much of a surprise. So as I grow and welcome these challenges, so too does Ngā Rangatahi Toa grow itself for the next stage of our journey. Now first on this next stage of our journey, if you happen to be in Auckland next Tuesday night, uh, you're welcome to come to the opening of Matariki, The Path is Made by Walking, which is a retrospective of our works over the last six years and also the culmination of a six-week art, art action project. There's invitations on the uh, desk there. Um, in general, though, our steps for growth are to an establish an alternative education classroom in South Auckland next year. This will be based on critical pedagogy of creativity, social justice and mindfulness. Beyond that, within our core alternative education group, not just from our classroom, we will continue the work of art action and mana wa order. A key focus for us, though, is scaling our mahi to the wider alternative education community and to back to alternative education tutors, working within all of alternative education through art action outreach and also through Art Action Connect, which is a peer referral program that we have with our kids, because it is our kids who know the kids that no one knows about, so bringing those kids into the fold. We're also setting up and try, uh, piloting Saturday Skills, which is a free community education program for second chance education for our whanau. So we've got alternative education classroom, we've got our core mahi that's going on, and we have moving into the community to really, for me, to reinvigorate the idea of what compulsory education, formal education, it's education, first and foremost. So our core five to ten year plan is to set up a Ngārangatahi Toa school to start impacting on alternative education. But as we all know, the alternative should be the mainstream anyway. So really to start impacting on mainstream education as well. Kia uh, ora thank you very much. Uh, the, the beauty of alternative education as a sector is you get a lot more freedom to do whatever you want. Hey, Jean, Jean's an amazing alternative education tutor who I work with in South Auckland. So we can um, not necessarily move away from the core subjects but incorporate those into the creative arts. Um, and my overwhelming experience of working with Pacific parents is to restore that dignity and um, pride in that the parents have for their kids, because often there's a lot of shame associated with a kid being excluded from school. It's a really slow process, and sometimes it doesn't happen, but more often than not, when the parents, when we can actually get the parents to come to the exhibitions, to come to the performance, that sense of pride helps them realise that this is the best thing for their kid.